it's Jay and today I am here with a part two of my August 2017 wrap-up. When I filmed part one, I had only read 13 books, but I have read two more books, bringing my total to 15. So these are books 8 to 15 that I read for the month of August, so without further ado, let us get started. The eighth book that I read for the month of August was Store Bought Baby by Sandra Belton, and I ended up giving this a one out of five stars. I did not like it at all. This book follows Leah who after the accidental death of her brother Luke decides that she is going to try to find his birth parents. I just found the book to be very bland and boring, nothing really happened, and I just didn't find it interesting at all. So I would not recommend it. I'm pretty sure I got it from the dollar store so like, no loss to me but did, did not like. The next book that I read is The Betrayal of Natalie Hargrove by Lauren Kate, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows Natalie Hargrove, who is basically the queen bee of her high school, and she has long dreamed of becoming the Plemento Princess. She obviously wants her longtime boyfriend, Mike King, to be crowned Plemento Prince beside her. So when Justin Bomber threatens her boyfriend's crown, she decides that she's going to take matters into her own hands in order to ensure this doesn't happen. The book was very entertaining, but it did get very annoying most of the time because most of the story was just Natalie trying to get her boyfriend to desire her and then her just complaining and whining when she didn't get her way on things and it just got super old super quickly. A lot of the story was just Natalie trying to get people to forget that she came from the wrong side of the tracks and I'm assuming that this was to like make the reader feel sorry for her and to like forgive her shitty attitude. But like, nope. Can't forgive her. She's just a shitty person. Just something about her really bothered me, but like I still really enjoyed how like manipulative and like vindictive she was anyways. Like I couldn't help but like her even though I hated her at the same time. I would kind of describe the book as like a really bad lifetime movie. Like it's not good, but you have to keep watching because you need to know what happens next. Do you know what I mean? Like it was one of those books. So like it was super entertaining, but like not a good book. The next book that I read was Scored by Lauren McLaughlin and I give this book a three out of five stars. Again, it was interesting, but it wasn't anything special to me. This book follows Imani Lamond, who is one of the Scored and she earned a 92 on the score corp scale. An individual score determines scholarship opportunities, the job that you can take when you're older, who you can hang out, it basically determines your life. Like many others in her high school, Amani ensures that she follows the rules of fitness that score corp put out many years ago in order to ensure that people are behaving accordingly. Peer groups are one factor of society that really influences your score, so when Caddy decides to remain friends with Caddy, who is a 70, her score begins to drop rapidly. When the next round of scoring comes out, Imani's score has dropped to a 64 because of something Caddy did. So now Imani must decide whether or not to keep the pact that she made with Caddy to remain friends no matter what, or drop Caddy in order to try to raise her score before the final evaluation occurs. Amani's dreams of college seem to have disappeared, so when the opportunity for a scholarship arises, Amani has to decide how far she is willing to go in order to make her dreams come true. The concept of the book was super interesting. It was super interesting to see what was deemed like right and what was deemed wrong in society and how everything influenced everything else. Attempted to cover a lot of interesting topics like racism, sexism, and making an even playing field throughout every individual. I liked Amani for the most part. At times she was kind of annoying to me. She was super naive one second, but then other times she seemed way too old for her age, so it was just like a weird balance. I did really enjoy her character development in the end though, and I definitely liked Diego a lot more, and I thought that his character was really well executed. I really enjoyed Imani and Diego together, and the banter and dialogue that they had together I thought was really interesting, and overall I think that the book could spark a lot of good debates in like classroom settings and things like that, so I think it was good on that aspect. The next three books that I'm going to talk about are all part of the same trilogy, so I'm just going to talk about them together just to make things go quicker, but they are Delirium, Pandemonium, and Requiem, all by Lauren Oliver. I ended up giving Delirium a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows Lena, who watched the disease More Deliria Nervosa, 
otherwise known as love destroy her mother. She vows to never let this happen to her. She only has 95 days until she's able to get the procedure for the cure which will protect her from the disease that has plagued people under the age of 18 for years now. That's when she meets a boy named Alex and her views on everything changes completely. I was actually very surprised at how much I liked this book. I was going into it very cautious because I have heard a lot of mixed reviews on it. But I think that it holds like a super important message but it's not like super in your face about it so I really liked that part of the book. I think that it was a super unique story and it was very thought-provoking in the end. At first I really did not like Lena as a main character. It bothered me so much how brainwashed she was and how she never questioned anything at all. It just drove me insane. By the end of the book I could not help but love her character development and everything that changed in her. Absolutely adore Alex. He's probably one of my book boyfriends now and he's just so supportive and caring of Lena and you could really tell that he loved her so much and that ending though, the cliffhanger, like I had to immediately pick up the second book because I needed to know if they were okay. Their romance just made me so happy and so I picked up Pandemonium and I ended up giving it a 4.5 as well. I'm not gonna give a synopsis of it because that gives away the story of the first book, but I love this book. I think it was more action-packed than Delirium, and I really liked the setting change, and I really, really liked Julian as well, who is one of the characters that got introduced. I also really liked Raven and Tack and the others that were introduced as well. I just... Ugh, Love this book. It was real good. Which leads me to Requiem, which I ended up giving a 4 out of 5 stars. I didn't enjoy it as much as the first two books. Because of the ending, I feel like I was just left with so many unanswered questions. Which, like, is fine, but, like, I, I want the answers to my questions. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I would not complain if there was another Delirium book, but, like, it's probably not gonna happen because it's been a couple of years. But, like, Lauren Oliver, if you're watching, hey, can you write another one? Because I need my answers. Right now. I really liked the dual perspective between Hana and Elena in this book, and the one thing that really irritated me... Which is another reason why I didn't give it a 4.5, because it probably would have been a 4.5, but... The, the whole love triangle square thing was just not... I did not like it. It bothered me so much. So, like, love squares should not be a thing. I'm just saying. The next book that I read was Surrender by Sonia Hartnett. I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. This book follows Anwell who is shunned from his small town after an event that occurred with him and his older disabled brother Vernon. Now several years later, Anwell and his family are deemed kooks in their town. This causes Anwell to create an alter ego named Gabriel. Gabriel is dying and now he is reliving his 20 years of existence with his friend Finnegan and his dog Surrender. Gabriel knows that Finnegan is bad news and he decides that he needs to get rid of Finnegan before it is too late and he hurts more people. I really liked the alternating perspectives between Finnegan and Gabriel. I think that it was a really cool aspect of the story. But honestly, half the time of this book, I was so confused with what was actually going on and what was real and what was fiction. But the thing is, like, it worked for the story. Even though I was super confused the entire time, just something about it had me on the edge of my seat. I wanted to know what was going to happen next, but I was still, like, sitting there like, wait, what? Half the time? The book covers a lot of dark topics. The main three are the difference between good and evil, mental illness, as well as guilt. The book is incredibly beautifully written but it definitely has some hard scenes to read. There was so much symbolism and metaphors in the book that made it such an intense read. I mean like it has an award so like it's obviously a good book. It was just very difficult to read at times. The ending was super vague and it's one of those endings where you can interpret it how you want. Some people hate that, some people like that. I didn't mind it in this book 
but it was definitely a hard book to read. Then the final book that I read for August is Don't Die My Love by Laureline McDaniel and I ended up giving this a 2.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The book follows Luke who has always loved Julie ever since he was a child even though Julie didn't feel the same to begin with. Now years later Julie and Luke are high school sweethearts and they plan on going off to college together so that Luke can play his college football and then they will eventually get married. When Luke receives a scary diagnosis, Julie decides that she's going to stand by him and show him how much she really cares for him and basically it's the story of his diagnosis and what comes of it. The book is heartbreakingly sad, like it makes you want to cry. It's an extremely fast read. I finished it in three hours. I think that Luke is adorable and the thing that he does for Julie in the end. Like I'm not gonna say what it is, but like it is so sweet and like my heart exploded like oh my god adorable. Julie really pissed me off. I didn't like her as a character. She was super selfish and vain and just she bothered me so much. Also Julie's mother really pissed me off as well. She was always like constantly at Julie's neck about college and I was just like girl like there are bigger things right now going on in her life like I understand where you're coming from but like chill fam chill. I think that the book was a bit slow at times and I kind of found myself being bored but it was a good story nonetheless. I didn't really care for a lot of the dialogue in it. It was kind of just not my thing. But I can see why a lot of people loved the book so much. Alright guys, so that was the 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 books that I read for the month of August. Let me know down below if you've read any of these, what you thought of them, and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!